Hey guys, how's it going? So we're back with another video. And today we're gonna to talk about something that's a little bit of a controversial topic, Chibson guitars. Well, what is a Chibson? It's a counterfeit Gibson. It's a guitar that says it's a Gibson, but it really isn't. It might look sort of like one, but there are always a few dead giveaways that show you that it's not real. Um, it's a big controversy right now among guitar players and collectors and buyers and performers about whether it's okay to own one of these things. Well, a factory that makes these in China reached out to me recently and offered to send me one. Um, and I said, sure, go ahead and send it my way because I was really curious how good or bad are these things. So it just arrived. Uh, so let's throw it up on the workbench, open up the box and see what's going on inside there. All right, let's do this for science. Um, I gotta say, right off the bat, this box is very, 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 very light. I'm in the truth. Here we go. Okay. It's your first look at it. Wow. Um. Oh, it smells awful. It smells bad. But there it is. All right, let's uh, get a closer look. I'm gonna get this box out of the way and we're gonna take a look at it. Okay, so here it is. I don't even know where to begin with this, guys. So first of all, it feels like, look at this, it's so light. I bet this guitar weighs seven pounds or less. Um, I don't like that very much. But anyway, that's the first thing that I'm gonna notice. Second thing that I noticed is the fingerboard this is the driest fingerboard i've ever seen in my life look at this it looks like it literally looks like a chalkboard i'm not kidding i'm honestly not even sure that this is real wood that's how i feel about this it does have the fret nibs which was the reason i chose this one it's applied very badly but it's there so there's that um the fret ends are perfect surprisingly and shockingly perfect um if we look at the pickups, there's really nothing to say yet. I don't know. I have a feeling, though, that when we pull these out later, we're going to find out that this whole body is hollow. The switch feels bad. Listen to it echo. Listen. You hear that? Listen. It's like the whole inside of this guitar is hollow. Which, I mean, that could be a benefit, I guess. Maybe it'll give it extra resonance. Pit guard, nothing to write home about. Um, here's your knobs. They're kind of hard to turn. They're high friction. Some people like that. Some people don't like that. There's the tailpiece. There's the bridge. So the bridge is uh, supposedly Gibson sized. I don't know if it's true. Um, thankfully, it does not have a retaining wire. So step in the right direction already, I guess. Um, if we go to the nut, the nut is a very bad crap nut i can already tell i mean look how deep that is cut very very deep um the tuners are horrible i can already tell by looking at them it's got these awful ugly green looking gross looking tuners let's flip it over there's your this is the most crudely applied horrible look at this like they took a laser and they just bzz, bzz, that is not how a Gibson is supposed to look, guys. I mean, I'm sure you all know this already, but on a real Gibson, um, they paint after they do that. And also, it's not, it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like that at all. The font is wrong. If you look at the tuners, I mean, look at these. They're smooth. And the look at the buttons. They're just like this sickly pea soup green color. If we move down, you can see, look at that right there. Keep going, and you can see another one right here. The other thing is this whole guitar is, like, beat up. It's got, like, fingerprints and smudge marks all over it. Well, moment of truth, how badly did they apply the logo? So they hide it with this so that uh, U.S. Customs doesn't take it, but we're going to peel it and see. Oh, it's bad, guys. It's really, really bad. Like, I 
I know you probably can't tell on camera, but this is horrendous. It looks like somebody got a stencil and spray painted with white paint is what that looks like. It does not look legit at all. There's your Les Paul model. That's the only thing about this guitar that looks right to me is that. So, okay. From this distance, it sort of looks like a Gibson Les Paul, except for the headstock logo. So if I frame it like this, it looks sort of like a Gibson Les Paul. Everything's pretty much the right size, you know, but it doesn't have the weight. The binding is there too on the frets, which is a huge difference between a normal, a real Les Paul and a fake one. Um, one small detail that they kind of got right, I guess, is the bottom of the 16th fret is supposed to be even with the binding. So if this binding actually was up to here, it's sort of close, I guess. Uh, the knobs are in the wrong place too. It's just all the little things, you know, and you could say, oh dude, you're nitpicking, but the little things all together make a big thing. If only a couple of these things were wrong, I wouldn't care very much, but like, oof. Um, I guess we should take a look at the side. You can see here very, very clearly that this is like, look at this. So there's a piece. There's another piece. It's like that all the way around. There's a piece there too. Let's take off this cover first. What? Um, guys, it has full size pots. Um, I don't know what to say. I'm kind of shocked at this moment. Now, are they Alpha? No. Are they CTS? No. They don't have any markings on them whatsoever to tell us what they are. I uh, did not expect that. There's a look at the switch. I mean, it's not even an import looking switch. It, it looks like... Not a switchcraft, but similar. I'm kind of scratching my head at this, guys. We're going to pull these pickups off. There's one. And there's two. Okay. Now, if we look underneath, we have Made in Korea. Doesn't say what it is. I'm sure that that number means something. Probably a $5 or less Amazon pickup. Um, if we look inside, oh yeah, look at that cavity there. And look at that. So they didn't just drill a hole in here. They, uh, they just gutted the hole inside of this. That's why it's so light. Now let me get down here and show you something else. So... Look how thin the top of this is. The top of this is just like a millimeter thick print that they just stuck on top of here. It looks like a couple pieces, two or three pieces of wood. You can kind of see the change in the wood color there. But obviously this is a fake top. And what they did was they, they just put this piece on top and then they used paint and they simulated this flame. This isn't real flame. And then if you look here at the neck joint, you can see it down in there. There you go. I did some weird stuff to the colors, but you got it. All right, so there we go. Now let's put this back together and I'm gonna go back in time and we're gonna go over the sound sample that I did before I took the stock strings off of the guitar. Okay, so my first impressions of this without even holding it in a playing position are, oh God, it's bad. But what I wanted was, a knock around Les Paul that I could gig with and not give a shit about breaking or having a problem. Um, the pickups are probably bad, and I guess the only way to find out is let's plug it in, see how it sounds. Okay, so here we go. I've got it right here. And before we start playing, I just want to talk about how it feels. It feels really weird. First of all, it is really, really light. Like, it feels lighter than an SG, okay? And that's kind of a bummer for me. Now, some people might like that, um, but I'm not a big fan of that. Um, again, I said this earlier, but it feels really cheap, too. Just holding it and feeling it, okay? Um, I haven't plugged it in yet. This, it's, it's plugged in. Like, I haven't, I haven't heard it yet. You're about to hear it with me for the first time. 
But I want to say before I strum anything here, I, I want you to hear what it sounds like acoustically, and it sounds kind of janky to me, acoustically. It sounds resonant, but in a bad way. It sounds resonant like the inside of the guitar is hollow. <laughs> Honestly. Um, I don't know. The tuners feel okay, I have to say. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and tune it again. Um, but it, the tuners feel okay. They don't feel bad. Um, I mean, the only way to, to really know how good these tuners are is to play the guitar and see if it goes out of tune, right? So that is something that we will check. Um, the knobs are very hard to turn. Like, very, very, very hard to turn. Um, so that's bad. The placement of the knobs is in a bad spot, too. So you should be able to go from the tailpiece and draw a straight line this way and just touch the top of this pot. But as you can see, you run right into almost the middle of it, so it's not aligned. And looking straight down at it, <laughs> these two pots are actually facing toward me. They're angled toward my face. And these two pots are angled down toward the floor. So, you know, they got a lot of the little things on this very wrong. But, you know, I just had to say in the hand, how does it feel? It does not feel like a Gibson. In fact, it doesn't even feel like an Epiphone. It, it feels like, I don't even know. It doesn't quite feel like a Maestro. It feels a little bit better than a Maestro. But it doesn't feel even as good as an Epiphone. Like this Epiphone here feels way better than this in the hand. But it also weighs like 15 pounds. So maybe some of it's just bias from the weight. But I don't know. Okay, we've got the Marshall Origin 50. I just got this. And this is the first time I've used it on any recording. It's going to be in this video. Um, I've got it dialed the way I like it with my Gibson Les Paul that I have. Uh, another one. It's actually not in here right now. Um, and my Gibson Les Paul Studio Lite that we talked about already. Sounds great with that. My Gibson SG Special. Sounds great with that. So, with all these settings, sounds good with all my Gibsons. How's it going to sound with this? How are the pickups? Let's go right now. sound bad honestly I, it doesn't it doesn't sound bad at all um, let's put it on the neck position now and see how this sounds I gotta say, it sounds really good on the neck position also. I mean, it sounds really good. Didn't expect it to sound like that. Now, before any of you say this, dude, you gotta set the guitar up, that's why it sounds like that. The whole point of this is that I didn't do anything to this guitar yet. I, I didn't even change the height of the strings. I kept everything exactly the same. Trust rod stays the same. I didn't even change the strings. I'm breaking my own rules here. I always say, First thing you need to do is change the strings on any guitar no matter what, which we will do. 
But the purpose of this is out of the box, could I take this and gig with it somewhere? Out of the box, could I take this and practice for, with my band? Could I take this and record with this? Um, so far, you could. I don't know about gigging with it yet, uh, because this is all straight. There's no effects on at all. Nothing. The effects loop is turned off. Boost channel is engaged, but there's no pedals on right now. This is just the Marshall, okay? And it sounds great. I worry when we turn on some of this high gain stuff, though, that we might get some feedback, which would make it not ideal for gigging. Um, but let's put that to the test. I'm going to engage the super overdrive, and then I'm going to engage the uh, distortion, DS1, okay? So let's go ahead and turn on the super overdrive now. So here it is on the bridge without it. <laughs> is that test. I mean that's that's a raw Les Paul sound right there. <laughs> you do when you play this will this will do it for you but how dynamic is it H how well does it adapt to different picking strengths and picking weaknesses light and hard so let's pick real light and then we'll pick real hard <laughs> Let's put on the DS1. Let's see how well it stayed in tune after all that. I didn't even stretch the strings and it's staying in tune. I am shocked. $2,000 Gibsons don't stay in tune. This is not as good as a Gibson. I'm gonna stop you before you say it. But it stays in tune better or as well as one, I will say. Okay, uh, what do we wanna do now? All right, let's turn the effects loop on. Down here on the floor, I've got a Holy Grail Reverb, an Echoplex, the SD1, the DS1. I also have a Tube Screamer. So I'll try and call out the stuff I'm using. For now, let's just listen to the Holy Grail Reverb on the neck position only and just see how it does with this kind of a sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was the flurb setting, uh, in case you didn't realize. Um, okay, enough of that boring stuff. We're gonna flip it down to the bridge. We're gonna turn on the DS1. We're gonna turn on the Echoplex. And we're just gonna go for it, all right? <laughs> Tube Screamer and the SD1. say I'm I'm shocked by how this sounds I wow don't judge a book by its cover I guess I expected this to be non-functional uh, how badly is it out of tune after all all of that we've not tuned since we started this these are the stock strings and they have not been stretched I just picked the guitar up and started playing it I don't know, man. Uh, I'm not cutting any of this because I, this is my real reaction right now. You're seeing it in real time. I'm not really sure how to feel about this because when I got this guitar ordered, I ordered like new tuners. I ordered a new bridge. I ordered a new tailpiece. I ordered new pickups. I ordered new pots. I ordered a new switch. I ordered a new nut. But the tuners are fine. I don't know how that's possible. Now, here's the thing. I've owned this guitar for an hour or less, okay? So six months from now, one month from now, maybe the tuners are going to be wore out and need to be replaced. But right now, these crappy looking tuners are fine. <laughs> It's a little bit out of tune right now. The nut isn't catching. When I bend strings, it's not popping up there. 
There's nothing loose down here. I will say the truss rod needs to be uh, tight, I'm sorry, loosened just a tiny bit because uh, there is some buzzing down here in the lower frets. So I am going to do that. Um, there's one thing to check though. We had some major feedback when I had both the Tube Screamer and the Overdrive on at the same time. So we got to do this. Is, are the pickups microphonic? At the very least, I'm probably going to need to replace these if I want to gig this guitar. Um, if you've gigged with very loud amps before, you won't know how it goes when you have pickups that feed back too much. I know that the guys, the pros used uh, super distortions and stuff that weren't wax potted and they dealt with it. That's true. That's true. But, uh, you know, I'm not willing to fight that fight. Those guys can do that thing. I'd like to not have feeding back pickups. So let's see. Uh, let's do the test. So what I'm going to do is turn on the S1. I'm going to yell into the pickups now. Ready? Hello. Might as well be a microphone. Hello. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. So the pickups are definitely not wax potted. They're terribly microphonic. Um, so there you go. What do I think about this guitar? as a whole, overall. What do I think? What do I suggest to you? Oh boy, this is tough. Because there are ethical issues at play here, right? Is it ethical to buy one of these? I'm gonna save that for another video. Down to brass tacks. Should you buy one of these guitars? I'm not gonna answer that question for you, okay? Only you can answer that question. Now, when I got this, I specifically wanted one that had the fret nibs. I specifically wanted one that had the Gibson-sized bridge uh, with a Nashville-style bridge without the retaining wire. Um, those were really my only two requirements for this. I'm not trying to pass this off as a Gibson to anybody. The whole purpose of this guitar is so that I have one that I can gig and I don't have to be worried about it all the time. I mean, I've got a three or $4,000 Gibson Les Paul as my very favorite guitar, but I don't know that I'm ever going to gig it because I'm terrified that it's going to break or that it's going to fall, the headstock's going to snap. You know, if you've seen me perform before in the live streams, I like to roll around on the floor with my guitar sometimes. It's very difficult for me to consider with that guitar. But with this guitar, sure. Does it have its shortcomings? Of course it does. The pickups, if you're not gigging, I don't think you need to replace them, to be honest with you. I really don't. If I never did anything but record down here with this amp at the volume level that it's at right now, then I don't need to do anything to it. It's literally perfect as it is, besides maybe a quick twist of the truss rod. <laughs> that if you were to get one of these, number one, do not get one if you're trying to fool people into thinking you have a Gibson, because that's just not cool. That's not ethical. I'm sorry. People are going to argue with me about that, but I don't think that's right. Don't do that. Gibson invented and created a legacy heritage object that we all long for, and not all of us can afford them, right? So this is the best option for some people. I would say this is a good option for people um, who are wanting to have something at home to play with. Um, somebody to have a mod platform uh, to take out to gigs or to record with. To have a, a no bones about it guitar that you don't have to worry about. It weighs nothing, so it is great for performing for that reason. It's weird. It looks like a standard, but it feels like an SG or something. The other thing I want to mention is the neck feels like a Slim Taper D, like an SG. So. There you go. I'm not going to leave the link in the description on how to buy this. All I'm going to tell you is that if you want to buy one of these things and you want it to be like mine, look for one that has the fret nibs. See that? There's binding on the end. That's one of the biggest telltale signs of uh, whether one is real. But also, I think it has something to do with the quality, honestly. Because if the factory that you're buying this from is going to take the time 
to put fret nibs on the frets, it means they took the time to do other things too. For example, whoever set this guitar up did a pretty damn good job. The tuners are fine, they stay in tune pretty well. I don't need to replace anything really, but maybe the pots, uh, because they are very, very stiff, I don't like that. And the pickups are very, very microphonic. So we will have a revisit on this guitar probably a couple times. First, we're gonna change the pickups, um, and then we're gonna change the pots. We'll probably do that at the same time. And then we're going to talk about the ethics behind this and what I think about it. And I want to know what you guys think about it, too. Is it ethical to buy a Chipson? Should you buy one? Um, you know, let me know. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all of you. Please like and subscribe. Join the Discord. The link is in the description below. We talk about guitar, gear, etc. I posted a picture of this in there as soon as I got it. Um, it's just a fun place to talk about stuff like this. So thanks again. Very much appreciate all of you. See you next time. And keep on rocking.